Alright, the new Kagodabachi chapter is here, so let's talk about it. The chapter starts off with Yuki and the sumo guy. They are at a restaurant, and it seems like Yuki's trying to recover herself by eating some food. And her food of choice seems to be spaghetti. So, good on her. Let her enjoy some spaghetti. And sumo guy shows her what I assume is the... Uh, yeah, it is the blade being sold at the auction. And she's like, Why? Could it be for money? And he's like, nah, it's it's not for money. And she's upset. It's like, why didn't you show me this sooner? And he's like, I'm sorry. And she's wondering, what exactly is Shihiro plotting? Meanwhile, we see the whole gang. We see Shihiro. We see Hakuri. We see Char, Shiba, Hinoo. They're all together in a car. And, and I kind of like this, you know. The, all the gang together in one place. It's just, it's wonderful. But, of course, the topic at hand isn't as great. Hakuri brings up how important the auction is to the family. And Chihiro brings up again that Kyura, his life is very important when it comes to the storehouse because if he dies, it goes away. Though, they do wonder if that's even the case. But, whether it is or it isn't, this man definitely has contingency plans, so they gotta be very careful. But, thankfully, Chihiro actually explains what exactly his blade is doing at the storehouse. So, he basically sent out his goldfish to scout the area. He shows a little flashback of when he did this uh, when he was at Sojo's place. And I can't believe he forgot about that. But yeah, he was able to send his goldfish around. And that's when he appeared to fight Sojo's men. And he's able to do it remotely at a far distance thanks to the intel he got from the Kabunabi when they fought against Sojo. So basically, he says, it's not that hard. I just have to charge it up with my spirit energy before I let it go. When the energy runs out, it doesn't work anymore. So he's basically like a battery. He charges up the blade. It's good to go. The goldfish are able to scout the area. Once the spirit energy is gone, they return into the blade. And they basically can't do much anymore. Which is pretty cool. And also, again, pretty funny. So, uh, Shiro's pretty smart to do this though. So props to him. Shiba then brings up how when it came to Sojo's place, it wasn't that far off. So he wonders if Chihiro's able to do it from a far distance. And he says, I'll try. <laughs> and I love Shiba's face. Chihiro's like, I'm not sure. But in any case, we would have been in a dead end. This is a necessary risk. Still a huge gamble. <laughs> and Shiba's like, kid's got a real poker face given the stakes. I'm shocked. Gives me chills. <laughs> what a face. I love Shiba. And his antics continue as he notices that Hakuri is, you know, really upset about what happened before. And Shiba, of course, understanding what Hakuri went through and has been going through his whole life, he decides to ask him, do you want some ice cream? And Hakuri's like, nah, I'm, I'm good. And Shaw's like, I want some. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm just saying, if Shaw wants ice cream, give it to her. She deserves it. But moving back to Hakuri, he of course apologizes once again for everything that's happened. But Chihiro says, even though I wasn't sure, I realized that no matter what happened, it's still mine. And we see the goldfish moving about, so... Chihiro isn't really concerned at all. He seems to have a good grasp of what he's doing. So, have a little faith, Hakuri. Chihiro even mentions that, you know, it's thanks to you that they were able to get such good information. And, of course, they have more questions for him, so they they can rely on him for any other things they have to ask. And Hakuri's like, got it. <laughs> and meanwhile, Shiba, what a guy, that Chihiro. This man is Chihiro's, like, biggest fan, and I love it. But now the plan is to actually find the storehouse itself and to infiltrate it, you know, without having to rely on the goldfish and have them be there in person. So far, the goldfish is doing its job, but Kyora actually noticed something moving about, but he couldn't tell what. He didn't see anything when he turned around. He knows Chihiro is plotting something. So to him right now, it's almost like a game. So either he gets the blade back or the auction arrives and he's actually able to sell the blade there. If that happens, he wins. So he says, bring it on. Then we circle of these two guys who talks about the auction and how things are actually going to be pretty dangerous moving forward. And it seems like they're not going to be sold until after dark. So in the day, everything is going to be fine. But afterwards, it is not going to stay calm. And then finally, November 8th, the 208th Rakuzaichi, the auction is finally here. <laughs> I have been waiting for this since they first announced it. And now, everything that they've been leading up to, building up to, it's showing up 
in the next chapter and beyond. We're finally at the auction. We're going to figure out what Jihiro is going to do to get his blade back. We're going to figure out exactly what Kyoto's other plan is. It, it, it's going to be really good. Hell is going to be unleashed and I cannot wait. Honestly, this chapter was just the calm before the storm. And I'm really, really excited to see how things go. And yeah, like I said, this was a calm chapter. But I, I think it's pretty good. It's just additional buildup for the auction when we see it next week. But uh, now, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think about the chapter and what you think is going to happen next at the auction. Just let me know in the comments and I'll reply to every single one. That'll do it for me for now though. Once again, I cannot wait for the next chapter and to finally see the auction. I think we're in for a good time. But that'll do it for me. Peace out and take care everyone.